around like fifth or sixth grade, some girl online sent me a link to My Chemical Romance, and everything oh, changed from there. Um, I was waiting because I was like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. At some point, the emo has to come up. Right. It wouldn't be this band if it was. But yeah. can you tell me why? <laughs> Tell me ain't why. nothing but a heartache. Tell me why ain't, ain't nothing but a mistake. Woo! <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it including me and these guys. My guests today are we're newly formed in January of 2022, independent emo rock band on a mission to bring back music from the early 2000s. Uh, current single, Confessing the Sin, rele uh, released in March on all platforms. And, yeah, stick around, because we're going to be uh, getting like, four songs from them upstairs in room six after this. So uh, please welcome to the channel, Raya. Say hi, guys. What's up, hey, guys? Hey. Welcome. Welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Plunk, plink. Yes, father-in-law, everybody's drinking. It's apple juice, I swear. <laughs> but you know what? This Room 6 whiskey really tastes good. Very nice. Delicious. Yes. If you would like some uh, shameless merch from me, uh, if you want to show your support for the local scene, and also help me support the local scene, go to room6.shop. I got mugs, I got hats, I got shirts, I got stickers, posters, all sorts of stuff. What I don't have are fuzzy dice. But you guys do. Yeah. You brought some merch. Yes, we did. Show, show it, show it, show it. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we, before anything else. In case you're watching and you don't know who Raya is, thank you very much for watching. Please, uh, tell them what you do in the band. Oh, well. And who you are. I'm... I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Mariah. I sing lead vocals, and I'm also the front person of the band. I handle the social media. Um, yeah. And My name is Drew. I play guitar and contribute backing vocals. My name is Dustin. I play guitar, and I contribute to songwriting. <laughs> My name is Alfredo. I'm the bass player and uh, backing vocals. My name is Josh, and I provide... A mouthpiece for uh, bands to come on. <laughs> so what? What are the merch you brought? Merch? So uh, we got shirts. Uh, originally, <laughs> I started out solo, and I made these shirts from uh, custom ink. So they're nice quality. Um, there's a lyric on the top that says, "You'll only leave me two. <laughs> it's from one of my emo trap songs. But it, uh, it applies to the band, too. It's emo, you know. And then we got our IG on the back. But we have shirts. We have stickers. Um, we also have a song called The City Is Ours, and we talk about Las Vegas being our home. So we got some dice keychains and, like, dice for your car. Um, we also work with... Uh, a charity called End Overdose. It helps people uh, test for things in their drugs or it helps people with overdosing. Uh, they have all kinds of, we have all kinds of stuff that we give out for free. Um, this is a first aid flashcard of what would happen when someone's going through an opiate overdose and what to do in that instance. That's really cool. Yeah, so they uh, have a training online that's like five minutes, and you do it, and you can get Narcan for free. Narcan, and Narcan is? Narcan is the, uh, the drug that helps reverse the opiate effects. Mm -hmm. So where can they get all this cool merch? They can get this merch. You can message Pink. us. <laughs> the address. No, oh, you can message us on Instagram. Uh, we'll give you merch. We'll, we have merch as our shows. Uh, yeah. We don't have an official website. We don't have an yet. official website yet, but it's coming. It's in the works. If anybody wants to make them one, though, hey. Right? Right on. Um, so I wanted to start off real quick with earliest musical influences. 
Okay. Now, we have seen Alfredo here before with Wheelchair Mosh Pit, who's yeah. currently looking for a drummer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Time recording. Uh, Mr. Lils. Uh, yeah, she, she's awesome, but, she, you know, she had to move, so. Yeah, Lydia uh, was cool. So, I want to say, just that earliest musical influence that, w- w- whether it was an artist or a song or a, a genre or a show, what was that thing that said, I want to do that? What was that earliest musical influence? Go. Uh, for me... I got my start in like singing from uh, listening to Escape the Fate. Like uh, they were like pretty much Vegas locals back then, and uh, that was back in uh, 2006 that I started listening to them. But like for bass playing, Wheelchair Moshpit brought me into it. But like it was just like uh, more of a recording process where I started playing bass. But influences Molly Crew definitely. Molly Crew, Escape the Fate, Falling in Reverse. Uh, were like huge influences. The Distillers was really cool too. Oh yeah, right on. Next, uh, I I remember like the first thing I remember like really seeing and kind of like being like, whoa, that's kind of crazy. Was uh, I remember being little like two thousand four Green Day's American Idiot coming out and like coming I'm on so TV. I, like <laughs> just like seeing it and being like, whoa, what's going on? And this is <laughs> sick. And, like it's really cool. And then I think like once like ninth grade hit. Was like when I had like full effect like I was like I want to be in a band and I'm gonna be a rock star and this is gonna be the sickest shit and I'm gonna play the hottest leads and ha! you know like you know getting into like Metallica and like the mm-hmm. thrash phase or metal phase I kind of like went through like a phase of like real like kind of like elitism though where it was like I I was oh like God. if it doesn't have a solo it sucks like you know that I've sort never of played message. covers yeah. <laughs> Actually, I still really hate playing covers. That's like one of my least favorite things. You know what? <laughs> there are there are times like if you're if you're doing an original show and they're with you, and you're like, I got a cover nobody ever plays, but they're gonna know. I love doing covers where you like you know so Jimmy Eat World. Nobody does Jimmy Eat World in the middle. I love, oh, but but the, so if you start playing it, people are gonna you know dance to it. They're, they're gonna like it. I love doing covers where they're they're not expecting covers. I mean, granted, if you go, you know, you're doing a cover gig, that's one of the things, but mm-hmm. right on. With uh, our live show, we'll play some covers. It's it's pretty fun. Yep. Uh, I think uh, I'm not even going to front, like, some of my earliest musical influences that I remember falling in love with would be, like, NSYNC, Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys is my shit. I actually had all those records and listened to them front to back. But I think, like, rock music and, and being part of a band and everything, um, around, like, fifth or sixth grade, some girl online sent me a link to My Chemical Romance, and everything oh, changed sure. from there. Um, I was waiting, because I was like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. At some point, the emo has to come up. Right. It wouldn't be this band, it was. But yeah. can you tell me why? <laughs> tell me why. Ain't nothing but a party. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, Michael Romance was a lot of people's like intro to emo. Right, it was a breakthrough, right. and from there, I actually like looked into other bands that were on the same label as them. They they started off on a label called Eyeball Records, which was based out of New Jersey, and then for their second album they were with reprise which was a subsidiary of warner brothers records yep. so there was like a ton of bands to get into based from that um and like a ton of great bands at the time like the use fallout boy paramore thursday you mentioned jimmy Eat world i don't know all those bands used to be on the warp tour together and right of course they'll always have a special place in my heart and the namesake of the band what's your earliest um, well so I was in second grade, and I watched this movie. It's just going to sound silly, but it's the Bratz Rock Angels movie. I've seen that movie, because yes. I have a daughter who is yes. 14, and at some point we watched we watched that. Yeah. Yes, and I watched that, and I was like, I'm going to be a rock star. I'm going to be in a band. Like, you this know, is what I want to do. I'm, kind of, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the Egyptian wingtips. That, that oh, actually yeah. would be sick, though, if like, Bratz hit us up. Like, they're, right? They're, 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 I'm pretty sure they're not doing a song for the new Bratz movie. Right on. We'll do a song for the new Bratz movie. They made right? it to like a Bratz doll or whatever. That Dude, that'd be right sick. Alright, um, so I have Bratz a couple, hit us up. <laughs> I have a couple questions for each of you. I'm going to actually start with Dustin. Okay. 
You also play keys in Twin Cities. Yeah. Guitar and vocals in Pretty All Right and bass for Lucky Boys. Yeah. When do you sleep? I don't. Right. So, I mean, all, all, all those bands still a oh, thing? You didn't let me finish that. I don't oh, I have a social life. So uh, I don't, yes. like, hang out with people. I don't do things. I just, like, work on music mm-hmm. and then, like, don't see people. Now, you're also, a, you're also an electronic music artist, right? That's right. Do you deal with uh, chiptune at all? Yeah. Cool. So this leads into uh, me talking about a uh, former guest I've had, Decaying Tigers. They make amazing chiptune rock. And if you haven't seen that already, um, here, check it out there. We love Decaying Tigers. Yeah, yeah they're, they're super sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we got to play with them at Chiba Hut on 420. Amazing. Yes, it was a great show. And that's actually where I met you guys. Yeah. Him, I knew already. But yeah. <laughs> um, so, moving on to Drew. You're, you're also a drummer for four bands and a guitarist for Live for Fun. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's like, damn. I, I feel lazy. <laughs> um, I had a question for you. How many ums by music and Western culture teacher did you count? Say what? Your, your music and Western culture uh, teacher. You posted that is like you just got a whole bunch of ums and you were going to try to count them. Oh, whoa! That was about a decade ago, though. Yep. Yeah, I I think I left her introductory class with maybe around like fifty. Like, because I had, like, a little tally sheet. Yes, I didn't did. post it anywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, you God. never posted the total. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I dropped out of that class not too long after. I just, like, could not stand that lady. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Don't remember your name. <laughs> Ooh, well, okay. I'm pretty sure she's not watching this. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to save Mariah for last because, you know. She's special. Yeah, she is definitely special. But Alfredo. Yes, sir. Also in Wheelchair Mosh Pit, as we talked about. But he's also in Danger Love. Yeah. And Dr. Love. Dr. Love. <laughs> I am Dr. Love. You are Dr. Yeah. Love. <laughs> but call him. <clears throat> what is your favorite cruise song, and why is it Dr. Feelgood? Uh, that's a wrong statement. It's not Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> <laughs> then you're wrong. My favorite one is... Uh, Danger from Molly Crew, actually. Danger's like, uh... We're not gonna sing it, because it's Yeah, right. yeah, it's, uh, it's a really cool song. Vocally, Vince Neil is, like, such, like, a talented singer. And I, I love the crew, you know, like, I listen to all those albums and whatnot. Yes. But, like, Danger, that was, like, the one that I just stuck out vocally. He's, like, got, like, you know, kind of soft vocals, and then it, like, comes in, like, really high, like, high vocals and just really powerful, like musically and whatnot right and it's like see i'm actually partial to uh a bounce between livewire and home sweet home which yeah. is the, the like the opposite ends of them mm. but um i always wanted to hear them try emo yeah i think home sweet home was as close as they got <laughs> all right uh mariah so rock band got you into uh, being a singer or a band huh yes uh rock band was my favorite video game growing up and i play it with my family mm-hmm. so it was a lot of fun. Uh, we'd always do That's What You Get from Paramore and Bring Me to Life from Evanescence and uh, all kinds of... I think there's a good Charlotte song on there as well. Uh, yeah. Nice. Rock band. So you and I share something in common. Former choir kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah I said choir. Former choir kids. Well. Choir kids, yeah. it's like, you're kind of like, well, I like this, but I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, I, I like the making music part. I like the, the learning how to do music. But I don't necessarily want to do this every Sunday. I want to, yeah. I want to go the to top, The topics of most of the song is, songs are definitely, like, a little bit to be desired. But, yeah. like, when you get it, like, I don't know. My choir teacher was really cool. He he gave us some really cool songs. Like, I don't know if you know who Eric Whitaker is. Shout out Eric Whitaker. The name's ringing a bell. He's a UNLV alumni, actually. Um <laughs> But he's like a real, real solid, like choral composer. Definitely check his music out if you haven't heard it before. Whatever, there you go. I, I always try to view choir class as a positive experience. It was like free singing lessons that I got to take during <laughs> my school day. It's, that's how I always try to look at it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All right, on. Um, so I have a couple more questions for you. And it, by the way, if you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, 
hit me up using the email address or the Room 6 social media link down in the description. That's also where you can find room6.shop link, uh, where you can find my Patreon link, and of course, a couple CDs that I put out myself. Um, it all helps to support the channel and, and support the scene. Money, please! Moving on. Hmm. I wanted to talk, real quick, favorite show memory, playing as Raya. I know you're, you're pretty brand new as a band, but do you have a favorite show memory? And, and if so, what is it? Well, it, for, could, it, uh, it could be like something went really bad or whatever. For, uh-huh. for me personally, it was probably our first show. To be honest, like we had like some really great shows, but like a memory for me was yeah. like you know like creating this band and like finding you know who we were going to be working with and when I like Dustin jumped jumped on board and like Drew and me and Mariah were already you know connected and starting the band and whatnot and. Uh, we ended up picking up Carlos afterwards, but like just the way that the the magic of the music like was coming together it was really phenomenal. And when us like you know after you know like playing that show, it's like man, our first show was like this, and it's like only gonna get better because like everybody in this band has been playing for so many years and whatnot. Like multiple, like how many bands are we all in together? Like 10 plus bands or something <laughs> like that, you something know? like that. So, you know, like everybody in this band is so talented and I'm just so blessed to be, you know, here with them all. And like, I look back on it. It was a fun time, you know, like winter yeah. time was super cool, you know, this year and whatnot. We only formed in January, right? Yeah. We had played our first show in February. So <laughs> you never forget your first, real quick, sorry. I forgot about Carlos. Sorry, man. Mm, Carlos yeah. is in the band too, right? Yeah. yeah. Where are you, buddy? <laughs> Probably at home with his uh, wife and son. Yeah, like, family. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, honey. So I'm staring right now. Um, but yeah, we, we forgot about Carlos, who, who plays what? Drums. Drums. That's right. He's the drummer. That's why you all looked at me weird when I said, who's going to drum tonight? <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, who's next for favorite show memory as Raya? You know, it's funny, at that first show, uh, like, A, we we actually had a different drummer, and he, he's an amazing drummer, too. Shout out to Joey Day, because, like, yeah. you know, Joey, so you big kill dog. it. Um, Baby. So, but at that show, like, because of how our practice situation was for a while, Drew and I were only bringing our heads, and we didn't bring the cabs to oh, our that's amps. Right. That's and right. And so, oh. like, we're playing our hard rock and I'm, like, playing out of this, like, Fender Champion, and my pedals are compromised, and all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, this is so good. I'm loving this. <laughs> that was that was a fun... But a good show memory, though, is just, like... I think the Chiba Hut show is probably, like, my favorite. Was, yeah, like, was, Chiba Hut puts on legit shows. Yeah, which is, 100%. I mean, technically, they don't... Whoever is putting the show on, but they, it's a great venue. And, mm-hmm. you know, except it, you got to... Something about the bathroom. You gotta do something about the bathroom situation. Mm. It's literally like one at a time for boys and girls. And every. You, you can tell when a band stopped playing because, boom, there's a big line. Uh, gentlemen, lady? Um, I think maybe one of my favorite memories is um, doing Triple B's backstage bar and billiards. That's a great venue. Um, that night was kind of hectic, because I was also playing guitar with Life for Fun that night, but I pulled off both sets. That was the night that it was announced that, um, Taylor feel, Hawkins, Taylor Hawkins oh, had yeah. passed away, and there was a, kind of like a cover tribute band that played before us. Can you remember the name? Velvet Chains. Velvet Chains. Yes, they Velvet played Chains. before us. And they did a cover of The Pretender by Foo Fighters, and like... Nothing hit harder right. than that moment. Oh, you hate following that. It hit me so <laughs> yeah. fucking hard. And then, I don't know, that was the first show we did with Carlos. I think the first show we were able to like pull off our backing track successfully. Um, everything felt really nice about that show. But I think we were slightly tighter on, on 420 at Chiba yeah. Hut. So which, that's a really which good is ironic. Too. Yeah, also, <laughs> yeah, just to like add to mine for a little, like 420 at Chiba Hut, what? 420 at the Weed Sandwich Shop. Are you kidding me? Can't like, beat it. like we that, were really blessed to play that. That event went 10 out. But you realize it was going since like 10 in the morning to midnight. Yeah. They all, like games and all sorts of stuff. Um, Scotty Dub, I think, was kind of running it. Yeah. And he was. He was so tired by the end. <laughs> you know, I, we, you know like, since we started this band, actually, you know, yeah. like uh, 
that Chiba Hut show 420 mm -hmm. was in the books since like January. It's like one of our goals. Oh yeah. We want, it was like written down on paper like what we wanted to do. And we just went out there and did it. We got offered by Scotty Dub, you know Scotty. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, he asked me, I was like, "Yeah, can you plug Mariah in that?" One, two, three, four, this one. This one. Anyway, shout out to Scotty Dub and all yes. the reggae bands that we played with at 420 on Chiba Hut. We were the yeah. Mojo outlier reggae. metal <laughs> band that got to play next to you guys. Yeah, you guys were definitely a uh, rose among thorns, uh, but all the bands there were awesome. All the acts. It was incredible. Before we get to Mariah real quick, I, I apologize. It's live for fun, not live for fun. Live for fun. Because I said live for fun. Yeah. Or, no, wait, wait. Hold on. I think you said live for fun. Really. Yeah, you did too. Live I thought you said live for fun. I was like, did I say live? Nah, sorry. Did I say live for fun? <laughs> Never mind. I'm perfect. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I, I have to say my favorite show was doing Chiba Hut. 420 because that was a big goal of ours mm -hmm. and it I uh, briefly worked at Chiba Hut so I always wanted to play at Chiba Hut yeah. and uh, it was just really cool. Did you know? Uh, did you work with Braun at the time? I don't think so. Okay, Braun. I didn't work at that Chiba Hut. I worked at the one. Over oh, by ULB. okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Of course, it's gonna be by ULB. <laughs> right on. Last question. You made it. Hey, definitely stick around. We've got some amazing music upstairs. And then uh, after that, we'll go ahead and see you for the outro. But real quick, let's pretend we're talking to little you. And you know what's coming. Oh, yeah. So you get to start. What is one thing you wish someone would have told you or warned you about before you got into music? Me? Practice your instrument. Oh, yeah, don't you say know, change your strings. Definitely practice your instrument, like, a lot. And then uh, for little me... Grow your hair out, learn how to cut your hair, and, you know, wear more black. You know, I think like, Jared has the uh, best response, though. Yeah. For me, it's like uh, like my, my style and the image and whatnot, it's like, it, it means a lot. And uh, I literally took all my colored clothes, threw them in the storage, and I don't really want to see them anymore. <laughs> you know, like, this is this is who I am. This is what I am as a as a person now. It's like I'm a musician. It's not your red so, yeah, I wish that somebody would have told me and mentored me into, like, you know, like, the skills and the image, like, you know, they go like this, you know, together. So, it seems but like what's working. It does help. The skills really do help sell the image. Mm -hmm. There's only so much image will do. I mean, it, you can say that, but, you know, it's yeah. both together. Yeah. You know? I think the triangle it really of it, though, the triangle of power is, like, image, hard work, and talent, you know? Yeah. Like, and so, like, trying to implement them all, you know, right. like, because if you look at pictures of me from, like, six years ago, I had, like, a full-grown, like, mustache and, like, a, a beard. My hair was, like, cut short, and I was, like, just not, like, how I am right now and whatnot. So, like, at one point in my life, I just, like, flipped it and whatnot, you know, like. Anyone ever tell you look like a young Uncle Iroh? <laughs> Who's that? From Avatar The Last Airbender? Thank you. <laughs> I have no clue. Heathen! <laughs> That's a great show. Yeah. It is. We're going to watch it. It's a great We're going to watch it. Tea. Anyway. Yeah. It's worth checking out. Um, I'm, I'm basically going to do this. So, Next. How about you? What would you say to young, young you? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Young, young me had no aspiration. Young me had no aspiration to be a musician. So... Uh, I would say get into it sooner. See, get the, point, into the whole point of this, I apologize for interrupting you. The whole point of this question is we're talking to new musicians. People who are watching this thinking, you know, I want to, I want to do that, but, but I'm, you know, I'm insecure. I'm, I'm, I'm new. I don't know how to be in a band or whatever. Um, I got a whole playlist actually called now what about that? Like you want to start a band now what you you know, your band broke up now what? <laughs> things like that. <laughs> Uh, you want to go on tour now? So, um, what would you say? What is something you wish that someone had told you, like warned you about? Um, warned, uh, or told you, hey, you know, this is a thing. Tell you, I, little, I don't know. Tell I wish that, you about what you want, dude. Rather, I think that like the thing that I wish that more, like I wish that I had was like just like the experience of like how to be professional at like a show or something you know what I mean because it's like mm -hmm. it's always nice when you go there and you can like 
be cool with like the sound guy or whatever because you actually like know what's going on you actually know like okay i'm not gonna like i'm not a drummer but like as a sound person like i really hate when the drummer breaks their cymbals down on stage just take your stands off the stage and yes. then break your cymbals down off stage you know it's like little things like that that i wish were like compact into like a guidebook that somebody could have given me like hey here's like the pro tips like when you're playing shows, here's the pro tips when you're recording. Here's the pro tips when you're, like, you know, just in any situation where I'm, like, right. there's, like... Coiling your cables <laughs> on stage is another big one. If you can coil fast, it's fine. You know, Ooh, if you've got yeah. your techniques down, just, get it. Like, I, I see, <laughs> I see, you know, pros. People that have done this in this town for just decades. And they literally, thank you very much. As soon as they're allowed to, they unplug. Dump it all in the gig, but in the in the pedal board or whatever, Sh- and get it off stage. Yeah. They they do everything they can to get out of the way of the next act, and, and you know there's a, that's the old dichotomy of well the middle act gets all the people, but they also gotta you know wait, hurry up, and then hurry up you know, <laughs> so eh, how about you? Um, <clears throat> advice I would give to my younger self is to stay committed. This is the most important thing. Ooh. Every everything else that um, you know you kind of think is important is not as important as this. I don't know. And my, like me speaking to my younger self, you know, I would tell him, um, "Don't let the drugs get in the way. Mm-hmm. Um, don't let the partying get in the way. The partying is not as important as this." And, um, always try to keep it in mind. I, I picked up guitar maybe in like seventh or eighth grade. So right before I entered into high school and it was real turbulent time and I was playing music throughout it. And I kind of wish I had made the music just defocus, you know, the number one passion, everything about my life where it was kind of, you know, peripheral. It was a part of my life, but if I could turn back time now or speak to my younger self, I'd say keep keep in the perspective that music is the most important thing to you and it's what you love and prioritize it, you know, act like it. You know, I'm going to put in a little bit of share to if I can turn my back. <laughs> if I can find a way. Okay, <laughs> cover it. Uh, please don't sue me. Uh, all right, save the best for last. Okay, uh, what I would tell my younger self is that there's going to be people that tell you that you can't do it. You can't sing, you can't be in a band, you can't be a musician. And even sometimes the closest people to you will be the ones to discourage you. And just don't let that stop you because you'll never know until you try. Yep. At at, at the same point, or the pursue it to that. Don't be afraid to take lessons if you feel like, you know what? Yeah. I need to, I need to hear from someone who is yeah. objective and also an expert. Hey, what do I need to work on? I feel very fortunate to have like the dad that I have, you know. Yeah. You, you you didn't have a choice. You grew up. Yeah, with I was eleven o'clock <laughs> uh, eleven o'clock. Eleven years old and he, like he said to me and my sister, which instrument do you want to play? You want to play bass? You want to play drums? Yeah, I tried that with my daughter. And like, and she eventually got tired of When I turned like 18, that was 10 years ago, and I played like four hours a night for like gig after gig after gig. And like he taught me so much that like, you know, like forever thankful for that. You know, like he, he taught me about like just so many gigs, so many different circumstances that, like, there's nothing that can break us and whatnot. It's like, right. nothing that can break me at, at a gig and whatnot. It's like, everything's going to be, like, running smoothly because I've done it for so many years, you know? Like, I'm not scared of anything. I'm not scared of whatever happens. That's why I bring my equipment the way that I do, you know? Like, I bring it and I'm prepared and whatnot for it. But, cool story, bro. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, like, also, as, like, a follow-up to that question, to just, like, I mean, if we're... The, the question being directed towards, like, newer, younger musicians, whatever, like, don't, 
don't like image is important, but like don't let the ego get in the way. You know what I mean? There's that's, a difference between image and ego. That's like a huge yeah. thing. Like if you're an asshole to anybody in the music industry, oh. it's such a tight knit community. Yep. You're gonna get that. You're gonna get the axe, and it's either pretty much you're not gonna come back, or like if you do, it's gonna suck for you. So just yeah. like. Don't be an egotistical jerk. Be kind to the people you work with. Be kind to the people who promote you and the people who promote your music, you know, your fans, the promoters, the venues, like sound people. Literally just like don't don't be a jerk. That's <laughs> otherwise you're gonna see all your friends on the flyers for the cool shows and you'll be thinking to yourself, Why am I not on the cool shows? Because uh Dude, you're a <laughs> nobody wants, cool. If nobody wants to work with you, you're not going to get any gigs. It's right. like the sometimes it is you. Have you yeah. experienced that a yes. lot? <laughs> mm. Sounds like you yes. experienced it a lot. For, I honestly, that's a good good message to go out on. I want to thank Ryan for coming on the show. I want to thank you all for hanging in there and, and watching. Hope you enjoyed. I hope that you will stick around for the performances they're going to do upstairs. And uh, yeah, temporarily we'll say goodbye and. I guess we'll say see you upstairs. Adios. Cheers. Hi, we are Raya, and this is our single out on Spotify called Confessing the Sin.
Hi, we are Raya, and this is Out to Soar. Hi, we are Raya, and this city is ours. So behind 
We are Raya and this is Stop the Bleeding. show it was a great interview and a great performance if you want to know more about them definitely click the link down in the description i've got all the social media links down there uh also while you're at it go ahead and get the signal which is called confessing the sin thank you <laughs> I, I, I was waiting to see like would, would they all yell <laughs> in the meantime like i said if you want to be on the channel hit me up if you uh want to see more videos like this please click up there or probably right over his face if you want to subscribe it would really mean a lot to me please click down there don't forget to ring the bell Hope you can tune in or come by the Room 6 uh, Rocks Summer Showcase on August 6th at Chiba Hut. In the meantime, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bow. There's always one.